to preach the word of God and I'm going to preach the word of God as God has placed it in my heart. You know, every year at the beginning of, um, at the beginning of every year, you find that a lot of churches, they are praying. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Um, we have churches that are doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. Other churches are doing seven days of prayer and fasting. And recently we just had ours. The seasons of seasons of not seasons of withdrawal stop confusing me seasons of waiting on the lord yeah and so prayer is just you know it's really i'm trying to build this thing so please encourage me please encourage me <laughs> whether you encourage me or not i will preach <laughs> i'm already encouraged in the lord and i will preach the word of god at your word. I hardened my forehead. Yes. God told Jeremiah, do not be afraid of their faces. And I'm just here to tell you, I'm not afraid of your faces. I came to preach the word of God and I will preach it. Yeah. You know, um, our father was sharing with us about the story of a certain wizard who was about to die. And so, you know, like, the same way like when um, children of light, like when fathers are about to depart, they normally call their children and they release their blessings, right? Even wizards do the same thing. Did you know that? It's like passing on the baton, saying continue with the work, continue with greater works. So this particular wizard, he was about to die. And he had a particular son that he loved so much. And he told him, son, come here. I need to give you some secrets. As I pass on this baton to you, there are three particular people that you are not supposed to touch. As you are doing this, your thing. The number one type of people that you are not supposed to touch are people who pray at night. People who pray at night. And you know, recently I was here, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday, yeah? And I found a group of young men praying. Praying at night, keshaying, not sleeping. Young people praying. They prayed from 10 p.m. up to, up to 4 a.m. And they were praying for you. They were praying for the squads so that things work. Hallelujah. You can have your seats, please. So he told him, um, don't touch people who pray in the night. And the second, because people who pray in the night are very powerful. Because at night, that is when all the witch doctor activities take place. At night, that is when people fall sick. I can remember like when my child was very, very small, I think two years, three years, he used to fall sick at night. All of a sudden, he has a convulsion. All of a sudden, his, his temperature has gone high, but during the day, he's okay. Now, when you ask, when you tell somebody, this boy has been sick the whole night, and during the day, he's busy running, running all over. You can even say, I'm lying. But at night, very powerful things happen. And then um, the wizard told the son, another group of people that you should not touch are people who do intermittent fastings. I mean, those are short, intermittent prayers, not fastings. Intermittent prayers. Those are short, short prayers. Like you pray for one hour, you're in your room, and then maybe after one hour you do 30 minutes after 20 minutes again you're praying 10 minutes after 15 minutes you're praying again 5 minutes do not touch those type of people and then the third category of people that the wizard told the son not to touch who can remember eh? people who pray for long hours six hours in the presence of God seven hours in the presence of God how can you pray for seven hours in the presence of God and and you're coming here and you're saying there's a witch in my village terrorizing my life how can it happen 
we should learn to pray for seven hours, eight hours, ten hours, eleven hours. And we have seen our father lead us in those very long hours of prayers. You are young. You can do it. You have the stamina. You have the strength to do it. Eh? You have unbridled zeal. Because right now you tell somebody maybe who is in their late 60s, unless maybe they really love God and they have a deep conviction for God, we are coming to church for Kesha. Hey, they'll come and sleep. But as for you, you will come and start praying from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Those are the three categories of people that you are not allowed to church. But anybody who does not uh, pray like that, you need to finish them. Sit down. You know, like I'm I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> As I've told you at the beginning of the year, that is when a lot of people pray. But those prayers should not stop in January and in February. The fasting should continue. As a Christian, you need to live a life of prayer and fasting. Not just like at the beginning of the year. In March right now, a lot of people are not praying. Or a lot of people will not pray. And, and, and just to let you know that, you know, um, the prayer services in our churches, in the body of Christ. I know I'm speaking to so many people. Are the least attended services ever. Like even today in the morning, how are we? Eh? How many were we? Eh? We thank the Lord. But we need to just, you know, revive ourselves, you know, with, with prayer. Hallelujah. Did you see what was happening in America the other day? At Asbury University. Eh? There is a university in America. You don't know that story. What do you watch on news? There is a, there is a university in America called Asbury University. And there was a service that was continuous for over 23 hours. And the service was for young people. They came to the chapel and they were praying and they were praying and I mean they were just singing and they were just worshipping God. And you know out of that revival just broke in, in America. It started I think on the 14th of February. Was it 14th February? When we were us, we were very busy here in Kenya going for Valentine's Day. Other people were experiencing revival. Eesh, what a shock. Kenya we need to change we were just thinking about fake flowers and going for lunch dates while other people were praying they were in the chapel praying seeking after God just one place like this and I mean in so many places right now in America the revival has really spread there were some churches where people were happy they had not gone for a very long time but because of those young people who are praying and seeking after God revival just broke do you believe we can also do you know there's different names of different revivals there's the Azusa Street revival now there's the Asbury revival which other there's the Wells revival do you believe we can also have the Ark Church revival young people praying for 60 hours Huh? Huh? Oh, not actual chai sound poor. Safina revival. Young people will be coming here to pray for 40 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours. And because you're praying here, you are affecting the whole of Rongai town. And because of the prayers that are going here, other churches just begin to pray. And people in Rongai just begin to have an urge of prayer. Do you believe it can happen? Me, I believe it can happen because I have seen it happening in the U.S. And I mean, for revival to break forth so strongly in the U.S. I mean, U.S. of all countries. U.S. So at this time... A country that, you know, had really gone a different direction from God. 
So you know how US has introduced powerful things like LGBTQ. Please just just sit down so that the people who are behind. I mean, I was, you know, I was I was thinking about that thing and I said like I mean, the hand of God is really in in US. You can imagine, you know, US is a superpower, right? You can imagine if LGBTQ was to start in a country like Kenya. Do you think it would spread? We don't have the capacity, yeah? But because the devil knows that US, anything it says, it goes. It had to start in the US, yeah? And you can imagine God has overlooked all those things. And right now we have a very, a very, very strange and a good revival in the US. Hallelujah. We are supposed to be the salt of this world. Yes, every place that we go, we are supposed to like affect, affect the world in a very, very big way, in a very, very great way. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'd like us to talk about prayer today. Um, if you're writing, I want you to write um, prayer. And under prayer, um, I want you to write um, pillars of prevailing prayer. And I'm just going to give you three pillars of prevailing, pre prevailing prayers as we get ready for our prayers this week. Because anytime we start praying, God begins to work. Hallelujah. But there are things that we really need to understand about prayer. Sometimes we find that people have prayed for so long. Somebody has prayed for like even like 21 days prayer of fasting, but there is no miracle that is happening. Um, somebody has prayed even for three months, but there is nothing that is happening. Somebody has prayed for seven years, there is still nothing that is happening. But let me tell you something. There is a way to pray that you touch the heart of God and, you be and God begins to look at your need. Hallelujah. You know, there are people when they go um, into the presence of the Lord, the only thing that they do is cry. Yes, crying. You can cry all you want, but crying does not move God. Let me not go ahead of myself. And um, the number one pillar of prevailing prayer is salvation. sip my water. My throat is dry. <laughs> the number one pillar of prevailing prayer is salvation. Say salvation. And I want us to read the book of John chapter 9 verse 31. John chapter 9. You will, okay. John chapter 9 verse 31. It says, now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he will hear him. Have you ever seen this scripture? John chapter 9 verse 31. Please help me read it. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does, and does his will, he will hear him. God does not hear sinners. It's scripture. Are we reading scripture? I'm not reading an encyclopedia. God does, or an atlas. God does not hear scripture. And you know what? You can be in church for a very, very long time and assume that you're born again. The fact that, you know, you are in church, you come for all the services, you are in the praise and worship team, hey, you sing very powerfully. And you, you can even lie prostrate here. But if you have not yet accepted the Lord as your personal savior, you're still living in sin. You can, your mother can, let me tell you. <laughs> you can even have numbers of pastors. The fact that you have pastors, 
as your friends. You can, ha or your mother is your past is, is a pastor. Your grandmother was an archbishop. Your great great grandfather was a prophet, and 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 now your uncle is the latest um, apostle in town. You can have all their numbers, but that is not the same as being born again. I'm preaching. And you can also be in a very uh, in, in a very big church, a denomination where people are born again. It is not the same. At the, I started going to Sunday school in PCA. I've been going to Sunday school, I've been going to junior youth. Now um, I'm in the women's guild. You can even have the blue kitambas written. Yes, written women's guild. And even wear a very long skirt like this. It is not the same as being born again. It's a deception. Eh? My father is an elder in church. Now that is what you're riding on. Eh? My mother is, is in praise and worship. Eh? My mother is an intercessor. Eh? Eh? I give big offering it is not the same way you can even come to this church and give money for the building and assume oh because every Sunday I give to the building I don't want to mention the amount if you give that is and you assume oh I am born again and I'm going straight to heaven eh? it's a lie you can even have a boyfriend that is born again. And you assume, oh, because my boyfriend. <laughs> Sit down, please. <laughs> yes. Eh? My boyfriend is a shepherd. Eh? He's, he's the senior minister. Eh? He removes offering. He's the chief minister. And you assume, oh my. We are going to heaven together. That is a lie. Salvation is such a, it's a, it's such a personal thing. It is too personal. You cannot depend on other people's salvation and say, Hey, I'm friends with many pastors. You can know all the pastors in Rongai. You can even know pastors in Africa. All of them. You can even know the Jehovah Jesus from, from Bugoma. You, maybe he's even your uncle. And, 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 and you're sitting there and you're saying, Aish, I am going to heaven. It's a lie. You're going to hell if you've not given your life to Jesus. Yes, you can be doing all those sorts of things, all those, you know, religious activities. But if you have never said it with your mouth and like really mean the words in your heart, you are not born again. We have so many people in church who are not born again. They just maybe some people, maybe they just like being associated with the acute church. And they're saying, hey, your church, they come for us with a van. And hey, na penaka kwenda uko kwa sababu uko na psych. My friend, you are not born again. And you see, the word of God says, now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he will hear him. God does not hear sinners. You're not born again. So maybe the reason why your prayers are not being answered it's because you are not born again god does not hear sinners you must have the right mind that it is only god who can save you you have to be born again above everything else you have to be born again it is not a choice it is not like a suggestion that i'm trying to like come and 
suggest to you, Aki Wushe, please, can you please get born again so that, I mean, you have to be born again. You must be born again. I mean, the times that we are living right now, we are living in very crazy times. Have you seen what has been happening? Even in the media, young men, young women, doing all sorts of crazy things for money. Have you seen young ladies? I saw it on, 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 on TikTok the other day. Young ladies as young as 22 years old getting married to people who are 65 years old. And yes, it is real. And, 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 and I mean, it is not one person, but it is a group of several people. Yeah, you're getting married to somebody who is older than you, somebody who should be your great, 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 great grandfather. And you even have, you know, this generation, it needs generation Z, Z, Gen Z. This, <laughs> see why? <laughs> Please sit down. Yeah, yes, this is that generation that really loves to express itself on social media. Anything, you, do, you take it on Insta, what's a TikTok? TikTok. It's like, you know, you have beef with somebody, instead of going to talk to that person, umeanza, kupost. Eh? Eh? And I mean, um, your marriage is not working, you go live. Part one, part two, part three. You've been beaten by your husband, you also go live. You are dating somebody who is married, you also post him on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. And you tag the wife. Hey! So recently, I saw a very, very young girl who was being abused by some very old mze. And this guy, and this guy, he's not Kenyan, yeah? And he was saying that, you know, I'm doing this girl a favor. I've, I've given her a house. I've given her a car. And the guy is like around 65 years old. How can you date somebody who looks like that even? Just because, just because they are giving you money. Just because they are paying your rent. You don't have any joy. In fact, even that girl does not even have an Instagram, I mean, a TikTok account. It is the old man who is showing her in his TikToks. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. We will be young people who will wait on God. Anything that you want, don't, don't allow anybody to mislead you in any way. The fact that you don't have it right now, it does not mean that you can never have it. It is just a matter of time. At the moment, God is still building your muscles. God is still building your stamina. Right now, peradventure, if God was to give you a Range Rover, what will you do with it? How will you pay the insurance? The fuel, the light itself. <laughs> You'll just be Driving in, Kis <laughs> in Kisarian because there are no cops there. Yes, even Pesayaka wash sayi hauna. I mean, let's, 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 let's learn to be content with where we are. One step at a time. One step at a time. We've also seen it in the media. Because me, I noticed those things, yeah? That young people... The reason why I'm bringing forth these things is because these things really irritate me. You've seen young men and young women even um, just deciding to be homosexuals. Have you not seen it? And it's maybe people that you know. And some of you, you follow those people. You even inbox them. Eh? Eh? Say minus me in Jesus' name. I mean, this is that generation. I mean, I mean, so many wicked things that are happening when you go on, on, on TikTok. Hey, me TikTok. Uh -uh. You find young girls twerking. Old women twerking. Men twerking. A generation of twerkists. What a generation. I even saw somebody on, 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 on. 
TikTok. Even children, they are twerking. Eh? Everybody. Eh? Shaking, shaking everywhere. It is that generation. And we cannot afford to be like the world. We need to rise up and stand out. Because our standard is the Bible. Not Instagram or TikTok. I saw somebody doing a video. I, I was so tempted to, to text them and tell them what kind of nonsense is this. They were inviting people to their church. And guess what they were doing? They were twerking. Church, twerking. Welcome to this church. And I was like, oh my God. And it's just that I cannot demonstrate. Eh? Umeshtuka already. And let me tell you. Then now. Hey! Twerkers generation. They are not here in Jesus name. Here we only have prayer warriors. And lovers of God. Let me tell you. The girl was twerking. And. And the number of people who were liking and giving, not even like comments. I have to visit that church. I have to come to that church. We will not need to do crazy things for people to come to this church. All we have to do is pray. We may invite you a squad away, Zienda. But because of that foolish girl on, on TikTok doing crazy things, you are, you are liking and. Ash, no. God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he will hear him. You have to be born again. Um, the number two pillar of prayer. Are you learning something? Where are my notes? The number two pillar of prayer is the word of God. Just like I said, I started saying, you can come into the presence of God and Kwanza, like <laughs> I was I was here on on Thursday for prayers and I mean people pray in different ways. There are people who pray when they are kneeling. There are people who pray when they are crying. There are people even who pray when they are clapping and running. That does not move God in any way. You need to go back to the word of God because God answers his word. Not tears. Not tears at all. You need to know the word of God more than anything. You need to love the word of God more than you even love miracles. You need to love the word of God more than you love food. Some of us love food. If we are told to pray, if we are told to skip lunch, if you are told to skip dinner so that we go and, and, and just be in the presence of God. We cannot do that. You need to go at the uh, answers. Answers what? Pray fast. If you, want to, if you want God to start moving in your life, take some time and, and I mean, um, just get rid of food. And you will see what God will begin to do in your life. I remember at the beginning of the year, our father said that, you know, if you want to start just start seeing change just give yourself six months alone six months six months six months six months of prayer alone the things that you've been struggling with they will begin to fall off one by one how many of you read your bible how many of you read your bible or it's just how many of you let, let's start even there How many of you even have a Bible? By a show of hands, ask your neighbor, when was the last time you opened your Bible? How many times do you go on Facebook and TikTok? Instagram, IG, eh? Snapchat. You need to go back to the word of God because... <laughs> The only thing that moves heaven is, is the word. Because God does not lie. God is not like man. You know, a man maybe might tell you, come on this day at this particular time. 
I'm, I'm going to give you a job. Tuma CV. I will connect you. Your uncle will lie. Come to Nairobi. And he puts his phone off. I want us to read um, <laughs> you need to know know the word of God every day you know this song we used to sing read your Bible pray every day pray every day pray every day read your Bible pray every day if you want to grow if you want Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Did you know that God honors his word more than even his name? Did you know that? Um, please help me with, um, where is that scripture? I think it's in Psalms chapter 138. Psalms 138 verse 2. And it says, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. God honors his word above his name. And where is the word of God? The Bible. The Bible. Eh? The Bible. Biblia. Very, very simple. Instead of being on Facebook all the time, on social media all the time, read the word of God. Take your time. Maybe you're here, you're looking at yourself. Hey, you're almost going to 40 years old. Not even 40. <laughs> 30. But there's no spouse for you. There's no man who is even saying... Psst, psst, psst. Huh? They are all calling you sister. Eh? And you are feeling so discouraged. Wanakuita auntie. Let me give you a story. There was, there was once a very, you know, this is a real story. A very young girl. And I mean, she used to dress very, very well. Very, very well. But somehow, somehow, People used to call her Mave. Don't allow some names when people calling you Mave and you think, ah, I'm mature. You're not mature. Are you a mother? Huh? You're only 18 years old and, and when, not even 18, 18 you're still very young. You're only 23 or 24 years old. When the brothers in church see you, they call you, Mother, Mother, Mother! Or Andy! Not even, me I don't care. Mother! And you're 22 years old. Mama County. Auntie Mado. Mama Africa. <laughs> so, sit down. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Tafadhali Sikiliza, yeah? So, this girl, she was very young. I think maybe 24. She used to work somewhere. And, and, and men used to call her mother. Who is 24 years? A lady who is 24 years. Imagine, a young, beautiful girl like this. Dan, Dana Ebustan, does she look like her mother? All the men used to call her mother. You know, and I mean, when I heard that story, I remembered what our father was telling us at the beginning of the year. It was the first service. And he said, that everybody has a, a scent in the spirit. So when a young, another young man was asked, why, why do you people call this young girl mother? Dana, sit down, yeah? 
and they said see aki anakaga like okay she's a young girl but anakaga tu mama ajaoga anatembea tembea could that be the reason why you're single men are not coming to you because your scent is like a mother who is like maybe 60 years old loitering with a very funny walking style a mother who has had maybe over six six husbands could, and and the boobs are falling off like this unasemba uko soko na kumbe i would say that Unanuka nguvu. Everybody has a scent in the spirit. The girl was young, 24 years old, but in the spirit she looked like a 64 year old woman. Could that be the reason why no man is coming to you? Say minus me in Jesus name. One one time there was another church in some area and the church was built it was a very 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 mega church looking beautiful and those guys had done posters and they used to come to the service and they start praying and praying and praying and there were only 12 people for a very very long time and you know people had not seen that church it's not like they were not doing anakazo they were doing anakazo but the church was not being seen by people so it was during this um prayer service like the way we have a uh, midweek prayer service and as you know the way minister lesh uh not minister lesh minister mash um leads us in prayers he's praying and the 12 people are praying and then an old man entered the church do you know what the old man was asking haya ini kanisa ah no akuliza hivyo haya mnauza chai na mandasi hapa mnauza chai na mandasi hapa and people are praying like in the in, in the spirit world like the church didn't look like a church it looked like a small kiosk somewhere kibanda kibanda people selling chai and mandazi minus our church in Jesus name we will not build a mega church and the mega church remains empty that is not our portion everybody every person here you have smell in the spirit you rem- you remember what our father told us china can you imagine the way minister mash leads us very powerful and then an old man comes here munauza china madas Munauza chai na mandasi? Yaani he's just in chai na mandasi as they are praying. Ati akikuja hapa atakula kofi. Jesus. Hey. You need to know. <laughs> I will not be distracted, yeah. <laughs> You need to know the word of God by yourself, yeah? When you live here, because you're not in church like the whole week from Monday to Monday, you're only here for very few hours. And trust me, by the time you leave this gate, kwanza with the ice pops that we eat, eh? With the dust, you forget everything, yeah? So you need to go back to your homes, to your hostels and just read the word of God. read and study the word of god by yourself amen pillar number 3 and i'm finishing and um the number 3 is the holy spirit and um please give me romans chapter 8 verse 26 Likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know what we need to pray for as we ought do you know do you think you know what you need to pray for do you think you know what you need to pray for for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered which cannot be uttered 
you must be filled by the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of Christians are very comfortable with um, just... Uh, <laughs> they are very very comfortable you know like when we call for um um not that like when we call i mean people to come and receive their lives to jesus you see so many people coming you've seen it right even in crusades so many people coming but can i shock you that a lot of people don't go beyond that like maybe the farthest they go is maybe just um salvation but there are higher levels to go. You can be born again and you can also speak in tongues. Or you think tongues is just for old wazes. Or you think tongues is just for people who sit at the front. Tongues is for everybody. Sometimes we don't know what to pray about. Have you ever been in the presence of the Lord and you're like, Aki God, I don't even know what to say. Or you can also be in the presence of the Lord and you're praying for wrong things and, and wailing and thinking, oh God, oh God, this is what I want. This is what I want. And that is not what you're supposed to be praying for. I mean, you're in high school or you're in primary school and you've already started praying for a husband. Yeah? Yeah? You are praying for a boyfriend. You are in primary school. You are praying for a boyfriend. I don't need to be a prophet to tell you you are off. It's an error. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know I teach a school. I teach them PPI. I won't mention the name of the school. yeah, For security purposes. But we go with a very powerful young man Sifuna he's oh I will mention the name of the school Ole Kasasi Primary School yes yeah this young man let him come can you see him he's very very powerful do you know how many classes he teaches every Friday um, I, a minimum of three classes and and every class has a, a minimum of a hundred students appreciate him he's a mega church pastor and he's very faithful do you know sometimes he walks all the way from Ole Kasasi from from Gataka to Ole Kasasi it's too powerful. I'll start crying. <laughs> what are you doing with yourself? So, in this particular class that I teach, like, sometimes they are so used to, like, passing prayer requests. They write it down. The things they cannot be able to to mention because um, before I start the class, because I don't go to Ole Kasasi to play games, yeah? Yes, I go to preach the word. And when I'm preaching the word, there has to be results, right? So I pray for miracles, signs, and wonders in the lives of the students. So the first thing before I start teaching, I normally ask people with testimonies to move on my right-hand side, yeah? So the children come with their testimonies, yeah? So um, I noticed that, like, in my class young girls were asking me to pray so that God can reveal if this particular boy is the right boyfriend for them. It is happening. Stop pretending. Not class 6, class 7. Class 7. Cla you know, like, we are growing up, right? And you know when, I mean, I'm... I'm you know, I'm happy at the same time, I'm also not happy. Because I'm happy because at least they have feelings. They have feelings for the opposite sex. Yes. If you're here and you have feelings for the opposite sex, you are very, very normal. And you should appreciate God for that. You are very normal and you should really appreciate God for that. I'm happy because of that. But then again, I'm very, very sad. Because 
how can somebody who is in 13 years old the only thing that they think about is, 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 is like a boyfriend. And even having the audacity to write for me a prayer request asking me to pray for them because they want to confirm if this is the right boyfriend for them. Yes, I have taught them everything by prayer. But maybe I need to go back and teach them about social studies because there are things when you start doing right now, they are so abnormal. Praying for a boyfriend 13 years old? Stop looking at me like that and you are saying, Ah, I'm only 18 years old. Even 18 years old, you are very young. To start praying for a husband then. 20 years old. Oh, I'm trusting God for a husband. Not even um, praying, but you are also living with him. 22 years old you are praying for a husband you are washing the panty of that boyfriend you are even there every Saturday cooking for him are you a chef that man that that <laughs> that foolish man young boy in the hostel telling you please i want sex i want sex prove to me that you love me if you don't prove to me i will die what kind of nonsense is that if they tell you i will die tell them die tell them you're not the first person to die tell them to die we will bury you if a person really loves you they will not tell you please let us start this thing because sex is very... But how did we get there? So many young children having sex. And they don't even understand how deep it is. You don't even understand how that thing can really mess you up. You know, somebody came and told me, Pastor, you know, I have been single for the last eight years and I've kept myself pure. But there is a man who came to me and told me that um, he loves me. So I was praying to God and asking God if this person, because God was not even um, answering my prayers, but I told God to give me a sign. If this man changes the profile picture, I will not that he's my husband are those the things that you are using to make very serious decisions somebody changing their profile picture it's a real story i'm standing on the altar i'm not even that was a colleague yeah it was not somebody in church yeah yes change if this person changes my profile picture I will know that this is my husband. Can I tell you what happened? Yes. The, 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 the guy changed the profile picture and the girl rushed into the man's house. The rest is history. We have to be filled by the Holy Spirit. We have to be filled by the Holy Spirit. If you're here and you don't speak in tongues, one of the things that you really need to desire is that God fills you with the gift of the Holy Spirit. I know we are growing and I mean, um, you know, one of the things that really disturbs young people is just this story for relationship. Eh? Atituatua. <laughs> young people, you're trusting God for a husband. You cannot just choose a man based on the, the face, the profile picture, or the body size. You might want to date somebody strong, tall, built like Minister Lesh. But maybe in the spirit, your husband is not like him. Your husband is a heavyweight and he looks like somebody like Joshua here. So when he comes to you, you say, minus me in Jesus' name. You know, this. I don't do such. What is this? I don't do little. <laughs> yes, you want? <laughs> it's true. It's very true. You know, there's a lady who came and told me, God has spoken to me and told me, brother, so and so is my husband. Buana amenena. Huh? 
So I was like, higher. Okay. You know, when people start using those phrases, God, please sit down, yeah? I'm finishing, yeah? When people start using those phrases, God has told me, I feel like God is directing me towards this, yeah? So the lady came and told me that the Lord, you're the relationship pastor. The person was not even coming to the Ark Church, yeah? The Lord has spoken to me and told me, brother, so and so is my husband. I looked at the lady. I was like, oh, okay. I didn't understand. But I told her, please give me some time. It did not take so long. After two months, you know, he came and told me again. God has spoken again and told me that this brother is my husband. Let me tell you, we do not have a God of confusion. When you see all those kind of confusions, you do not have the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the things that I ask people when they come and start telling me that, you know, I have feelings for this person. I ask them, have you prayed? And they say, yes. What does God say? Do you know there are people who have the audacity to tell me, God has spoken. And then after two months, they come back to me and tell me, but see, the relationship is not working. You did not hear God. You do not have the Holy Spirit with you. Because God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. He's a God of order. How can you start a relationship? You know, sometimes I wonder, has God spoken? Yes. What has he said? Plan with this person in mind. Eh? That is not God. And then after two months again, you come back to me and tell me, Pastor, this thing is not working. If we are to make very important and critical decisions as young people, we have to involve the Holy Spirit. We do not even know how to pray. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. It is only the Holy Spirit who can help you in your weaknesses. You're here. You're struggling with masturbation. You've tried everything anointing yourself it is not working you need to go back to god and tell god god this thing i cannot do it i cannot do it how can you come here pray for two hours you're speaking in tongues and then go back to your home and you're masturbating again it can never happen in jesus name or you've come to church you've prayed three hours seasons of waiting on the lord you've prayed you've been here the whole day praying Five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours. And then at night, a foolish young man from Rangao calls you. And you're like, hey, this one, I can't miss it. You take a boda and go to Rangao. You're not going to Rangao to read the Bible or share the word of God. You're going to remove your panty. My God, you do not have the Holy Spirit with you. If you have the Holy Spirit with you, the Holy Spirit will help you in your weaknesses. That's why if you do not speak in tongues, you're a very dry Christian. So if you do not speak in tongues, for how long do you pray? It's, it's a question. What do you tell God? Eh? What do you tell God? What do you tell God? Two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, that needs to change. We need to start, you know, like, yes, we hear very powerful testimonies here of mighty miracles of what God is doing in our lives. Stories, you know, God provided for me a phone. God provided for me a pair of shoes. God provided for me fair. That is very, very powerful. But if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to pray. So that anytime you go into the presence of God, you are praying for six hours, seven Seven hours, eight hours, you've locked yourself in the room. When you start praying like that, you will begin to come here with crazy testimonies. Like when somebody comes and starts testifying of a phone, we'll be like, yeah, that is okay. That is very, very normal. But we need to get to the place whereby as young people, because we are prayerful and we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we get to the place whereby you come here and tell Minister Jewel, act church. I have a testimony and God has been doing a mighty thing in my life and you know recently one of my neighbors who was blind um, called me and asked me to pray for them when I went to pray for them my neighbor was blind for 10 years I just laid my hands on them like this and they received their sight those are the kind of testimonies that we want 
the testimonies that move God. Did you see the kinds of miracle signs and wonders that Jesus used to flow in? Did we ever hear testimonies of cars? Testimonies of houses? I mean, we had serious testimonies. I'm looking forward to the day people will come here and say, you know, I prayed for the sick people and they were healed. I prayed for somebody who had cancer and God delivered them from cancer. The reason why I'm talking about it with so much boldness, because I have seen it happening. My father had cancer. I prayed for him and God delivered him from cancer. And let me tell you, that time I was not even a pastor. I was just a member like you, but I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I believed God for his healing. How can your mother be at home so sick with diabetes and you say you are an Ark Church member, you come here every morning for prayers. How can it be like that? How can your mother have diabetes and you say, oh, me, I come to the Ark Church every morning. I come for rising stars. It's a lie. You need to go back to your home and command that diabetes to live in the name of Jesus. I'm also looking forward to the day people will come here and start saying, I raised this person from the dead. This young child was dying and I just called him forth. And, he, and I mean, he started breathing again. Do you believe that God can help you do that? It's only when you have the Holy Spirit. You cannot be without the Holy Spirit and say, oh, I will do great and mighty things. The only reason why your squad is not working is because the presence of God is not there. It is our ear of the presence of God. And the presence of God is so powerful because you can never be in the presence of God and still remain the same again. Or have you ever gone to the presence of the Lord and you're telling God who he is? You know, like God, you're faithful, you're mighty, there is none like you. I mean, God loves it when we worship him. Anytime we begin to worship God, we begin to tell God, God, you know, you are like this, you're like that. God will even start to reveal to you who you are. Most of us or many of us don't know who we are. If you know who you are, you will begin to press on in prayers, serious prayers, serious prayers. Whereby when you're coming here, we are coming with crazy, 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 crazy miracles. The miracles of phones are powerful, but there are higher levels of miracles. I remember one time, I'm, I finished by the way. One time we were living somewhere and I had just, I had just lost my phone. I came with my phone, but my phone, I don't know where, I, I think I placed the phone on top of the car and then I got off the car and then I went upstairs. So, <clears throat> I went back when I was at home I realized I didn't have my phone and I started calling the phone was ringing after two minutes it stopped ringing and I knew very well when I was driving I had my phone with me so I went downstairs and I asked the Ascari have you seen a phone here he told me no me I don't know but like when I was driving I had my phone yeah so I went back home and I started praying. I was like, God, I cannot serve you like this and lose things like that. I started praying. I was praying and pushing because the phone was new. How can you buy a new phone and then it is stolen like that? I prayed. I, pr I locked myself. I started praying on a serious note. And guess what? After, after I think it was after one hour, two hours, the Askari came. Ni apa? Ni apa? After two hours. No, like when I went upstairs and then I came back again, I told, I just spoke loudly. Whoever has taken my phone, return it in Jesus' name. And then I went upstairs and I started praying. I prayed, I prayed. Two hours. The Ascari came. And it was my phone. Prayer is very, very powerful. Prayer is very, very powerful. I shared a testimony. Um, I was still in prayer and we were praying and fasting and the Lord revealed it to me. Anytime you go into the presence of God, you're praying. You have to hear God. You have to hear God. If you've never seen visions, you have to believe that God will open your eyes for you to start seeing visions. For you to start dreaming dreams. You cannot keep on dreaming. Cats chasing you. You flying all over please you need to start having mighty dreams dreams where jesus is visiting you and telling you 
Well done. Well done, my daughter. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Those, I mean, those dreams, those things like really make us really desire more of God. You have to start desiring. You can have an encounter. You can have the same burning bush encounter as, as Moses had. Do you believe that? You can have it. It is not just for specific people. It is for all of us. I remember one time we were praying and the Lord spoke to me and told me, go to this house. And God showed me two children who are being defiled. And I was like, okay, what is this now? Because I'm also new in this neighborhood and all that, yeah? So I went to that particular house. It was a neighbor that I never used to talk to. When I went to that house, you know, you also have to use wisdom when maybe, like, you, you understand what I'm saying, yeah? So I went to that house. I was not talking to that lady. And I told the lady, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that there are two children that are being defiled. And the lady was so shocked. She was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Do you know it was true? One of the child was there. The other child was in the children's home. The Holy Spirit told me to use my influence. Yeah. So we went up to um, Nairobi Women's Hospital. And it was true that the children were being defiled. So we had to call some very influential people until the other child was removed from the home. When you stay in the presence of God, you cannot remain the same again. I want you to start desiring a prayer life that is consistent. Not just fasting in January alone and then the rest of the year you are praying for five minutes. What is that? For you to be a person who will cause change and make territories change, you have to be a man and a woman of prayer. I am so inspired by Asbury University. Young men, young women like us praying and they have caused us to just be churches. Please.